What's going on, guys? It's Steve. I'm not gonna. Oh, let me let me just take a breath real quick. I'm not gonna scream during this video, but I'm done. I'm done. How the hell does Carmelo Anthony not know the direction that the team is going in? How does that make sense? After months of Phil Jackson's posse coming out and saying Melo was going to get traded, he didn't get traded, Rose didn't get traded, nobody got traded, our rotations are awful, our coach is awful, I freaking quit. I quit. I know I said I was a representative of the New York Knicks. I officially quit. I'm done. I, I quit, Phil Jackson. I'm done with you. You are the curse of the New York Knicks. We were going in such a good direction until you came to this team in 2014. Ever since that time, this team has been nothing but in shambles. It's embarrassing and it's an absolute travesty how bad the New York Knicks have been the last three and a half about to be four NBA seasons. I cannot take it anymore. It makes no freaking sense. You hire someone to, first of all, who the hell fires Mike Woodson to hire Derek freaking Fisher? Someone that's never been a coach before. Someone that's probably not even going to be in the Hall of Fame. I don't give a damn if he won five championships. He was a freaking role player on that with Kobe and Shaq. I, I don't give a damn. Yeah, he was a good player. Don't get me wrong. But are you kidding me? You're going to hire Derek freaking Fisher. Derek Fisher to coach the team. You fire him midway through. You have another scrub come in. And then on top of that, <laughs> on top of that, you don't go after Tom Thibodeau. You don't go after Mark Jackson, but you hire someone that has a negative coaching record who just got fired by the Phoenix Suns because his rotations are awful. What did I say after the first game? This season, we're going to have problems. Why? Because the rotations are absolutely awful. They make no freaking sense. They make no freaking sense. Ever since this man came to the New York Knicks, it's been nothing but an absolute travesty. An absolute embarrassment on shambolic levels. It's, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. How does your star player, a once-in-a-generation player, a top 50 player of all time, one of the top five, top three scorers in NBA history, how the hell does Carmelo Anthony not know the freaking direction that this team is going in? How the hell does that make any sense? How does Carmelo Anthony not know the direction that the New York Knicks are going in? Does that make any fucking sense to you, Phil Jackson? It doesn't. I can't take it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. All, all of the people in my freaking building that I live in probably think I'm crazy. I don't give a damn. If they went through what I went through, representing the Knicks, embarrassing myself for the Knicks, they would feel the same freaking way I feel. I had to give myself a LeBron James fucking hairline. I had to burn a pair of my favorite Carmelo Anthony's, the Melo All-Star M11s. I had to sit there and say Paul George is better than Melo. I can't take it anymore. This team is an embarrassment. Kristaps Porzingis is injured now. This team, we're probably not going to make the playoffs now. I don't know what the hell has to happen, but something has to happen. And what's going to happen? You need to fire Phil Jackson right now and just hire me. 
if you hire me, I'll turn that franchise around over freaking night. I'll get Chris Paul, who just verbally agreed to re-sign with the Los Angeles Clippers, to take his ass to New York City to play with Chris, to play with Carmelo Anthony, Kristaps Porzingis, Kyle O'Quinn, Courtney Lee. I'm gonna see if Derrick Rose wants to be our backup point guard. If he doesn't, he's gone. And we're gonna be NBA champions in two freaking years if you hired me. But what does Phil Jackson want to do? He wants to go party in L.A. He can't even party. This dude is nearly 90 years old. He wants to go to L.A. What, what, he, you want to know why he accepted this? Because he wanted money. Let, let me say something about Phil Jackson. and something that a lot of people don't realize. A lot of people don't realize that any coach can be a great coach. For example, now I, I think Eric Spolster is still a really good coach. Okay, and that's apparent by how his team is still successful without Chris Bosh and without Dwayne Wade and LeBron. However, when Eric Spolster had LeBron, Wade, and Bosh, best coach, coach of the year, uh, all-star, yeah, all-star coach, coach this, coach that, he's the best young coach ever, this, this, and that. Okay, you don't see people saying that anymore. I still say it. I've been saying it for the last six months. Go back and check, you know, but the only, there's one exception. To that, and that's Greg Popovich. That guy is ridiculously good. Okay, but Phil Jackson had. Let me see. Who, who did, who did he have again? Uh, I believe he had three of the top ten players to ever play in the NBA. When was the last time an NBA head coach had three of the last top? Uh, not even last. Three of the top ten players to ever play. What? And he had two of them at the same time for a period. What? Who, who was it again? Uh, let me see. What's, the, what's this guy's name? Some people refer to him as the, you know, the greatest player of all time. But I don't, I don't remember his name. I think it's something like Michael Jordan. I think, I, I think the other big man is something along the lines of a uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Who, who, who's that other guy? The guy that just retired. Uh, the greatest, the greatest Laker ever. What, what's his name? Um, uh, what? Oh, that's right. Kobe Bryant. So he had the two best shooting guards ever. Possibly the best big man ever. Three of the last, three of the top ten players to ever play in the NBA. He had all of that combined. Are you gonna sit there and tell me that he's the greatest coach, one of the greatest coaches ever because of that? If you give Coach Hornacek, Kobe and Shaq at the same time in their prime, with that roster, they he would win five championships the same way, three championships in a row. And then he would win two more with Kobe the next few years. And then with, with Jordan and Scotty and Dennis Rodman, he would win there. I, 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 I don't understand the logic, okay? And that's the God's honest truth, okay? You get lucky to be in a situation. You got lucky. But is he still showing off to be a good head coach? What about when Dwight Howard and Kobe came? Where was his head coaching skills then? Where when, where was it then? You know, in Powell, when they were supposed to win the championship with Nash. That team would have been Steve Nash, Dwight Howard, Kobe, and Powell. Ooh, boy. That was 2010, 2011, Dwight. Damn. <sighs> you know, so to me, you know, it, it makes no freaking sense that Carmelo Anthony doesn't know the direction that this team wants to go in. He says he wants to, Phil Jackson says he wants to rebuild. So why didn't you trade Melo? Why didn't you trade Derrick Rose? Why did you sign Joe Kim Noah for a four-year, $70 million contract? Why are you doing all of these things? That it, it, it makes no sense what he's doing. You know, it, it truly doesn't. And it, it's an embarrassment. It's absolutely embarrassing. Not just for the Knicks, but for the league. That you're treating this ro this franchise like this. First of all, this is the greatest franchise ever. Okay, the most known franchise ever. Maybe not in terms of winning, but this is the greatest franchise ever. This is the New York Knicks. This is the Mecca. This is Madison Square Garden, and you're disrespecting it? You know how long we've been mediocre? We had the possibility of building around a once-in-a-generation player. So once-in-a-generation that the last once-in-a-generation player we had came nearly 15 years prior, oh, more than that, 20 years prior to when Melo came. But yet somehow, some way, they fuck it up every day. Can't take it, man. I just I can't take it. It makes absolutely no sense that this team 
is this bad. It makes no sense. You know, there's no excuse to why the New York Knicks should be this bad. There's no excuse to why our rotations are still awful six months into the season. There's no excuse for any of that, okay? There's no excuse, you know? There's no excuse that we have someone averaging 23, 6, and 3, but we're still losing we're not even in playoff contention. That makes no sense to me. You know, so you want to know the God's honest truth? I hope. I didn't pray. But I hope, I hoped, past tense, that Melo would have gotten traded. I did because uh, you, you see how he's handling this. He's staying mellow. He's staying quiet, you know, so professional, you know, and people respect him a lot for that. That's why the coaches chose him to be in the All-Star game over Avery Bradley because they know what the deal is. They know Melo's still the Melo. You know, they they know he's still Melo, all right? So, I am i don't know, man. I, I can't take it anymore, guys. I, I'm done. I'm, that's it. I'm done. Anyway, guys, it's been Steve. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, thank you. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Anyway, guys, at the end of the day, I don't know if we're going to make the playoffs. Uh, oh, We better, but uh, you never know. Anyway, guys, it's been Steve. I'm out. Peace.